Hair is one of the most important aspects in building an attractive appearance, and in this video, I'm going to go over a step-by-step -step guide on how you can ensure the healthiest, fullest, best looking head of hair. I used to have some pretty gnarly looking hair, but after paying attention to these 5 things, I get compliments all the time now. Number 1 is to clean up your lifestyle. If you're starting from a point where you're out of shape, stressed, not sleeping right, not eating right, then you just have to get the basics in check first. In addition to the host of other harms a poor lifestyle has, it'll also impact the health of your hair. A full head of hair is attractive in women and men alike, so bad hair in this case is rightfully a sign of a poor lifestyle. Before worrying too much about supplements and products, just make sure to get your lifestyle in check first. That means getting physically fit, sleeping enough, drinking enough water, and ensuring you're exercising. From there, we can think about the extra steps. Next is shampooing, and in the case of most people, making sure not to shampoo too often. Everyone is a bit different here in terms of how oily their scalps are, but the nature of shampoos is that they often strip away the protective oils in our hair called sebum. These protective oils moisturize your hair and scalp and protect it from the elements and oxidative stress. Shampooing is a necessary part of hygiene to keep your head clean, but doing it too often can leave your scalp and hair brittle and dry. A good rule of thumb is one to two times a week. In terms of choosing the right shampoo, make sure to choose a shampoo where the active ingredient is ketoconazole. Ketoconazole is an antifungal drug that has a huge range of benefits for your hair and scalp. First off, it can treat scalp acne and also remove dandruff from oily scalps. Secondly, ketoconazole can actually reverse hair loss by preventing the buildup of DHT in your hair follicles. DHT is the hormone that contributes to male pattern baldness and hair loss, so using ketoconazole shampoo will guard against this. The downside with ketoconazole shampoos is that it can dry your hair and scalp even more than normal shampoos will. That's why post-shampoo hair care becomes even more important in this case. Which brings us to the next topic of conditioning. Conditioners are products that help restore moisture to our hair. In contrast to shampoos, in-shower conditioners can generally be used as often as you want since they act as synthetic moisturizers or sebum for your hair. Deep conditioners or hair masks also exist that you leave in your hair for 20 to 30 minutes to give it an extra hydration boost. I also recommend applying leave in conditioners or hair lotions in your hair at night before you go to sleep so that it can hydrate your hair overnight before you wash it off in the morning. Leave in conditioners can also be used during the day if you don't mind them and they don't impact how you style your hair. Blow drying your hair can also cause damage to your hair due to the high heat, and so there are blow drying lotions you can also apply to your hair to protect it from heat damage. These can be left in your hair afterwards, just like leave in conditioners. If you want to take your conditioning to the next level, you can apply hair oils to your scalp as well, leaving them on overnight. This is especially useful after you shampoo, as applying straight oils will be more effective and potent than conditioners generally. The relevant oils here are castor oil, argan oil, and rosemary oil. Castor oil and argan oil are rich in vitamin E and fatty acids that act as antioxidants for your scalp, with the fatty acids acting like a sebum protective layer. Both oils are also non-comedogenic, which means they won't cause acne on your face or scalp. Rosemary oil has also gotten some hype recently, as studies have come out that show that it can actually help in regrowing hair. A six-month randomized trial of 100 people in 2015 showed that both rosemary oil and monoxidil users had more hair at the end of six months, with there being no significant difference between the two Groups. Next are hair supplements, the first of which is biotin. Biotin is a form of vitamin B that's used to metabolize carbs, fats, and proteins, which is then used to synthesize healthy hair, skin, and nails. The next supplement is saw palmetto extract. A 2020 systematic review found five randomized control trials and two prospective cohort studies that supported the use of saw palmetto for reversing hair loss. Finally, there's collagen, which is often taken in powdered form. Collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and is found in your skin, hair, and joints. And so supplements Implementation here can have a wide variety of benefits. Finally, we come to the heavy hitters, the proven hair regrowth options. Do you know that once you start these treatments, you'll have to continue using them forever. Stopping them will cause you to lose the hair that you gained, but you won't lose more hair than what you started with. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't have any hair loss, so I don't need any of these treatments. The truth is, you probably won't even admit any hair loss until it's already too late and at an accelerated rate. While there are treatments that can regrow hair, it's much better overall to prevent the hair loss in the first place than try to reverse it and regrow it later. Because of this, you'll always get better results taking these measures preemptively rather than in response. Most men will experience some sort of hair thinning or hair loss throughout their life, so it's worth considering these preventative measures. The first is minoxidil, which is a topical that's applied to the scalp and is theorized to work by increasing increasing blood flow and potassium channels to your hair follicles and stimulating regrowth this way. It can be applied in a liquid or foam form, but 
I much prefer the foam as I find that it makes my head less itchy. Minoxidil and the alcohol bases that contain it can be drying to your hair, so be sure to condition your hair with leave-in lotion afterwards. Next is finasteride, which is a DHT blocker just like ketoconazole. Finasteride works by inhibiting the production of 5-alpha reductase in your body, which is an enzyme that breaks down your testosterone into DHT. By reducing DHT in your body, your hair follicles won't get choked out. As finasteride has a direct impact on the hormones in your body, some people are worried about its supposed effects on your sexual performance. However, one study estimates that just 1,000 men are affected by this condition in the whole world compared to over 2 million users in the US alone. At that point, you're more likely to think it into existence rather than the effect actually being real. However, you might be more susceptible if you have a history of depression or poor lifestyle habits or low testosterone, so always check with your doctor or dermatologist first. Dutasteride is another 5-alpha reductase inhibitor that's even more potent than finasteride. In comparison to everything else in this video, nothing else comes close to the power of dutasteride or finasteride in growing your hair or regrowing your hair. Both of these drugs address the underlying causes of hair loss rather than just treating its symptoms. For finasteride and dutasteride, however, you'll need a doctor prescription in order to get them in the US. And in the case of women, you should definitely not take either of these drugs because they can cause massive birth defects. I get my finasteride from HIMSS which you can do completely online. I've included a referral link below, as well as affiliate links to the products that I mentioned in this video in case you're interested. That's it for my step-by-step -step hair care guide. Be sure to check out my other videos for more self-improvement ideas and give me a subscribe and comment down below.